Welcome back everyone, my name is Terry Roach and this is Serious Automotive Training. Uh, we're back in here with uh, Subchapter E, we're on Module 19B for Subchapter E for Pennsylvania Motor Vehicle Safety Inspection. So again, my work uh, that I do is free on YouTube. I'm not connected at PennDOT, Department of Motor Vehicle Bureau of Safety Inspections at all, currently. Uh, my, my experience comes from years, 9,000 hours of flat rate experience as a technician. Prior classes teaching hundreds of safety inspection mechanics in vocational schools in Pennsylvania, community colleges in Pennsylvania, and most recently I worked for 10 years as a DOD contractor in Iraq, Afghanistan, and all the way through beautiful Europe, Bulgaria, and beautiful Kosovo. So, where are we now? We're in Publication 45. So, Publication 45, the latest edition is November of 2017. This is for the inspection regulations that the inspection mechanic is aware of. It's also great information for the vehicle owner, for the station owner, or the police. So, we're in subchapter E, so we're up to about page 37 in the manual. So, I, uh, we're about halfway through from, sub, from uh, 19A already, so we're going to pick up in the middle here. But the information that I use for this came from the publication 45. Charts 1 and 2, which I have here. We're going to go over those. They're in the back of the book. We went over the tables previously. So table 2 and 3 have to deal with the location and the required lights. Required lights and the locations for lights and lenses. And it's broken down. So table 2 and 3 is for 80 inches and wider vehicles. So multi-purpose passenger vehicles. Trucks, buses. And then uh, 4 and 5 or for 80 inches and less in width. And that includes passenger cars. So, just a quick thing to throw out you here. A half-ton Suburban is a multi-purpose passenger vehicle. You could also have a three-quarter ton, a 2500 series Suburban. The difference is one is over 80 and the other one's under. So there is two different types of motor uh, multi-purpose passenger vehicles. So when we get into the chart, I'll explain some things about those. So here's where we're at. We're going to pick up on some more of our Boltons. We're going to go over some charts here that I have drawn today down in beautiful Adams County, Pennsylvania. So let's pick up here with some information on center-mounted stop lamps. So center-mounted stop lamps, some people put an additional uh, spoiler on the back of their vehicle that's mounted on the trunk and that has the uh, another center mounted stop light so then what the customer will do or the dealer or whoever they'll disable the one that's inside the vehicle so January of 98 can an interior high mounted center stop lamp be disconnected when it is partially obstructed by a trunk mounted spoiler that has a center mounted stop lamp installed here's pen dot provided the spoiler mounted stop lamp comp complies with all applicable federal and state visibility requirements it may be disabled or removed so it will pass so there it is January 98 that is legal for safety inspection okay so uh, as long as we're talking about uh, center mounted stop lamps we see a lot of these uh, on pickup truck caps so they'll disable the one in the back of the cab and then they'll mount a the new one in the back on the on the cover of the uh, pickup truck cap. So we have a bolt in here from April of 92. It says, actually it reads, okay, uh, da, 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 da. so and a DOT approved center mounted stop slash turn signal light combination. So it has more than one bulb in it and the way it works is when you hit the brakes the one will stay on, but the other one will flash to indicate the direction you're turning in. So it's like a combo, okay? It's not a rejectable item for inspection. The rejectable criteria listed in the inspection, okay. So in other words, the one side could flash to indicate direction while the other one is still utilized for braking. That was a problem because back in 1986, we started putting those in vehicles that were older than 86 and the whole thing would flash. So first the state came out with a bolt and said, nope, can't do it. Then about a year later, they came back out with a new one and said, okay, it could do it as long as it's only the half that's indicating. 
So there you go. You got it in black and white. Okay, let's. We talked about all this stuff. All right. So let's get into headlamp aiming or headlamp adjustment. Well, if you read the publication 45 or any of the other material that I put out to you, they list both. Is there a difference? Of course there's a difference. Headlight aiming means you're aiming the light. So you're using some type of piece of equipment to project the beam out onto a screen or, or something. When you do a headlamp adjustment, you have a sealed beam and you're using a piece of equipment similar to an old hoppy that's mounted to the glass with a suction cup and that is just the headlamp itself so the lights don't have to be on so there is a difference in the wording does it matter to you? hey, till you get in front of the judge <laughs> then it matters so let's go over the different types of headlight adjustments so bingo let's go right into our chart you could still use a screen, they're about a hundred bucks you could buy them, you could make them whatever so here's our headlight aiming screen it's a 12 foot screen the way it works is from the center of the headlight to the ground is measured and then there's some strings that are on here where you move up and down so you center that you measure to 25 feet so you find ground zero the center of the headlight center there so then you turn the headlight on now you cannot have that headlight high or low beam out of adjustment from the crosshairs of more than four inches so it can't be four inches up down left or right if it's out of that area it fails it's primitive it still works it's what they still use for motorcycles vehicles remember if your if your shop is using this you got to be 40 feet 43 feet long so it's my it's the screens 25 feet in front of the headlight okay turn the lights off like I said set it up turn the lights on and make your measurements so real simple it's a lot of measuring tape stuff once you do one hey no problem so they're still good headlights for the purpose of our um, chart in the back of the book for uh, the location of the required equipment all vehicles have to have headlights that are mounted between 24 and 54 inches remember that you may see that question thrown at you somewhere down the road so this is where a few vehicles lift it you need to verify the height of the headlights okay and we're talking about the center 54 to 24 inch so that's every vehicle that's on the road so as long as we're looking at this beautiful H2 Hummer truck multi-purpose passenger vehicle here let's talk about the license plate light license plate lights have to be white they could be mounted uh, the top or the side according to the table in the back you could have one or two if it came with two you need to <laughs> now there's no height restriction so if someone has something mounted on the back of their their truck and they want to haul with a little uh, little fold out uh, hitch hauler they could adapt some type of piece of bracket up to mount the license plate so there is no height restriction for a license plate okay very good very good we're getting somewhere now let's go back in and talk about aiming headlights I showed you the first way which is with the screen okay we use the headlight aiming screen now the second way I would recommend keeping these you could still use these so probably up to about 92 they use the uh, sealed beams with the little tabs so this this uh, hobby style adapter could headlights they could still be used but if you're inspecting anything newer you're gonna need a screen or a photo electric type aimer so these are the ones where the quality assurance officers are coming around now and saying, hey, show me your aimer and show me how you use it. And show me how you adjust for floor slope. So you need to know how to use your aimer because the quality assurance guys are coming around with the state police <laughs> and they want to see it because in Pennsylvania, we check headlight aim or we check headlamp aim, whatever you want to call it. So, I have a bulletin here from August of 2017. PennDOT, headlight aiming. As a result, PennDOT is emphasizing the importance of headlight aiming, which is required part of the inspection procedure. You have to check it. You don't have to adjust it, you have to check it. 
Here's a, here's a service bulletin from Pennsylvania Automotive Association. My good friend Skip Wagner, excellent teacher at Dolphin County Boat Technology, a service manager, training manager at PAA. Headlamp, is it legal? Any adjustment requires customer approval and may be charged. So you can't just go adjust headlights, okay? Headlighting equipment, March of 2000. Boom, discontinued headlight test equipment that meets the appropriate SAE standard may continue to be used. So that hobby could still be used, no problem. But guess what? Let's say, for example, you have a fleet. <laughs> Everything in a fleet has an old style composite headlight or a sealed beam. Sure, you could use that. All right. Headlighting equipment, discontinued testers. We went over a ton of information here. I uh, just wanted to point out one last thing. If you're using that composite aimer, I gave you an illustration in the chart. Well, this is just a breakdown of these uh, photoelectric aimers. They shoot the light inside the machine. It heats it up the back, the back of the machine, gives a nice picture for you. So we have a bunch of different... Uh, Chart 2 and Chart 3, that you're in the back of the book, the different style uh, patterns for aiming or checking the headlight. This is for the high beam, and here's one that shows the low beam. So they're crosshair patterns or illustrations of headlights that are seen inside your photoelectric machine. So, again, you could use the screen, no problem. So, I think we covered everything. We went over subchapter E, lamps, lenses, and headlights. We also have the chart here, so if you have any questions about the chart, you could Google the chart. It designates all the codes for the lights. So, the important thing to remember is, for the purpose of today, I used table 2 and 3, which is because my Hummer H2 is wider than 80 inches. It's a multi-purpose passenger vehicle, so it gives me the required lights, Indicator lights, clearance lights, lights display light, give me all. And it also gives me where the locations and the height of each light, if it's required. So great information. Any questions for me, email me, seriousautotraining at yahoo.com. Follow me on LinkedIn, Terry Rooch, or just give me a shout out on YouTube. Again, best of the day. We'll follow up here with uh, some more information on interior of the vehicle for inspection. So have a great day.